Ben Garcia here with List Realty, and today we're going to talk about the procedures in a Section 8 rental contract. So basically going through the steps of what you can expect to have as far as paperwork goes um, when you do a Section 8 client. So a Section 8 client calls you and says they would be interested in looking for properties. First thing you need to do is ask them how much is their voucher amount. So you need to find that out quickly. Um, some of them are in application status. Uh, you don't want to be taking anybody out until you know how much their voucher is. Section 8's made some changes. Um, now they're going by zip codes and different things like that. So um, you really, it's really important to know what their uh, amount is going to be. Now, um, in some places, uh, Section 8 is, again, going by zip code, so you really don't know exactly how much it's going to be, but they do have uh, guidelines you can request from the, um, uh, from the caseworker. So every Section 8 client will have a caseworker. It's really important to get that information right off the bat. You want to be having conversations with this person and open the lines of communication like you would at a condo association, for instance. Okay? So they're going to have answers that uh, the tenant might not. So in any event, um, you're going to uh, take out a Section 8 client. Uh, now the MLS has removed the option for Section 8 because of, uh, especially down here in Broward County, in the southeast region, because there is a local ordinance that prohibits the discrimination of anyone based on source of income and Section 8 specifically. So there's been a lot of lawsuits here, hundreds filed uh, by uh, attorneys calling up realtors and asking them if they accept Section 8. And once the realtor says no, that's it. The uh, realty office is going to get a letter that they're being sued for discrimination. So it's really important if you live in Broward County or any county, find out if they have a local ordinance um, against the discrimination for source of income. Source of income. So any event, uh, we still in Broward County have a lot of people that say we're not going to take Section 8 or we don't. I have a standard template email. Uh, you can request it um, uh, if you just uh, you know notify me. Um, at the bottom of this video, I uh, have a standard template that is very effective in getting people to understand what a Section 8 is and what the advantage is of taking a Section 8 client. So that's another step in the process that you might not have to do on a regular deal that you would really want to do when you are submitting offers to potential uh, landlords. A lot of landlords do not know anything about Section 8 and their realtors know less. So the more you know uh, and the quicker you can educate them as to the benefits of a Section 8, the better. So um, what you're uh, looking to do next is um, um, you're going to make the offer. So making the offer, it's really important that you do the contract to lease a little bit differently. So normally you put first, last, and security. Section 8 will be paying first and last, but they will be paying last on the last month because they're not going to pay it in advance because they figure they're the government and they're going to pay, they're guaranteeing the payment. So on the last month, you're not gonna to have to worry that you're not getting the last month. So Section 8 generally will pay the first month. The tenants will be required to pay the security deposit. So when you're doing a Section 8 contract to lease, you're not gonna put first, last, and security. You're gonna put, uh, and the move-in date, you're gonna put first on the first month. You're still gonna put last, so it looks good to a uh, potential landlord, it's still first, last, and security, but you're going to put the date will be the second to last month, okay? Um, be, that's when it will be paid on the last month, basically. Um, and, uh, and then you'll put security will be on move-in also. So when you get a deposit uh, from the tenant, it will actually be security. So on the section uh, on the contract to lease where it states what will this be going towards, you make sure you put it in security and do not take your commission out of that because you cannot take commission out of security. So in general, 
if you're holding a, a deposit, you will have to write the full amount back to the landlord. So when you're taking an initial deposit, you can give it to the other realtor. It's probably more convenient. They'll feel better. Now, uh, Section 8 normally um, pays on the 15th and the 30th, so that's important to know. So um, how do you get paid? How do they get paid? What's the next steps? So um, after you've agreed upon a property and um, everybody has signed the contract to lease and the tenant has deposited, uh, an amount um, you're going to write up the lease the lease and the information along with the packet from section 8 which the um, tenant will need to give you uh, um, now it's time to get the package over to the uh, landlord a lot of times we'll do that with the offer um, but it uh, doesn't necessarily have to be so as long as you let them know that um, that you have a section 8 client Okay, so once the once they have uh, the the packet, um, they will fill it out. The other side will fill out the Section 8 packet. Again, you can talk to the social worker if you need a copy of it, but the tenant usually has it, and um, and uh, you will turn that into the uh, Section 8 office. They will process it, and then they will send out an inspector. They that property needs to be inspected. Now the inspection is not scary they're just looking to make sure that uh, it conforms to what they are claiming it is it's not really a, a two bedroom when they're trying to get a three bedroom voucher or what have you make sure it's it's proper it's it doesn't have you know one meter for three units or th things like that so in any event they do it rather quickly and they usually give you the approval right on the spot and by the time they get into section eight that afternoon the the sec caseworker will have it ready to go so once they have the uh approval of the property the tenant can move in any time after that it's almost like a condo association approval once you get that approval letter you can move in any time no matter what so the the lease will then be adjusted to that day it's rarely that you know it's rarely on the nose you know but uh, so you'll you'll um, you'll put in a new date and then you'll send it back to section 8 they need that with the new date and they will not release any money until the tenant calls them and says I have the keys it's really important the tenant needs to call section 8 and say I have the keys that triggers what's called the HAP contract and that's the contract that is going to be signed between the the section 8 and the owner in order to facilitate the payments uh, to the owner so that HAP contract usually goes out within a day and uh, can get signed quickly and as, as long as they have the HAP contract and the lease then they're going to have the difference of the amount of what section 8 is going to pay so let's say a $2,300 unit, Section 8 might only be paying $1,400. And the other money has to come from the tenant. So be ready for that, okay? Even though the tenant put a full security down, they still may have to have additional funds ready for the difference of the rent and the voucher for month one. It's really important to know that. Okay, and then um, what uh, generally they do is they, uh, Section 8 will pay on the 15th and the 30th or so of every month. Um, they will, you know, generate those first checks. So um, you normally might have to wait a few days uh, to, you know, 10 days, a couple of weeks for yourself to get paid from an owner unless they are going to front your commission. Okay, so it's really important to make that, you know, understanding early on uh, of, of how it's going to be paid. You might have, your company might have to give them a, uh, a W-9 or an invoice or something along those lines. Okay, but it's usually, you know, relatively quick. Owners know right when they get the money, they pay in general. Okay, um, there, are, uh, there are options where 
the you might have the let's say in that scenario of 2300 and the difference is 14 and um you know uh, the the tenant has 850 dollars they still have to pay towards first month well we all know that you can take commissions out of uh first month so you might make an arrangement with the other realtor and say hey look if you'd like i can tell the client to make the list realty since the deal's already closed and you're really just waiting for payment i can have them make it to my company name and uh, th that'll be towards our $1,150 commission. And then the owner can write me a $300 check once he gets the, uh, once he gets the check from the, the, the government. And they often like that. Okay, so that is an option too. Um, sometimes the landlord likes to have all the money in so they can show the income and the expenses. So again, not out of the ordinary. You have to have a little bit of a level of trust because you are dealing with a real estate company. So I've never had a problem. I've never had an issue chasing down a landlord to get me that uh, commission check. Okay, so I hope this answered a little bit of your questions. I try to go through it kind of quick. I didn't want it to be longer than uh, 10 minutes, but that is uh, the basic procedures. Nothing to be afraid of. A little bit of extra work, but if you learn it and you get good at it, it's a great niche market. Section 8 clients are desperate to have people to help them, and uh, landlords uh, can be educated easily and opened up to the Section 8 market. And once they do, you know, they usually stay with it because those checks coming on the first every month, uh, you know, they get used to that quick. Okay, so if you have any questions, my name is Ben Garcia. Our number is 954-924-5454. I'm the broker and owner of List Realty, and you can visit us at listrealty.com.